Oh, whoa. I hope you have all of this this down right here. That we were touching on the the Ethiopic and the Ethiopian connection. Uh, the Ethiopic connection between the the Gala, the Gala of the East, and the Gullah of the West. The Gala and the Gullah of the West. Some say it may have uh, some relation to a tribe of people named the Gola, and there's a lot of other linguistic uh, suppositions that have been supposed. But what has not been put forward clearly or at all is the clearer connection between the Gala, formerly, formerly known as the Gala, but today known as the Oromo people, and the Gullah people, and the etymological roots or the historical situation that led to this nor a time period. We have pointed that out. We've pointed out a time period for these events because it's very important and a historical context for these events which also connect with slavery. Which also connect with slavery. And not just slavery in its um, um, western sense. No, we're not talking about slavery just in the sense of roots. We're going beyond just the, the, um, the, the television show, Roots, and we're getting to our true roots as Gala people or today's Ormo people. We're making the connection between the Ottoman Turks, Mohammedanism, between the etymolo etymology, you understand, that was connected with the Ottoman Turks, you understand, to those who Gal, Gul, Gal, La, Gul, La. Gula, Gala, those who said no, you understand, initially to Mohammedanism, and then others later on who would say no to Ethiopian Christianity. But the first set who said no to Mohammedanism, you understand, became Ethiopian Christians, and many were later known as Amhara, Amhara. Those who became known as Amhara, you understand, were able to maintain themselves in the highlands of Ethiopia and in the African Zion. Others, unfortunately, were able to be taken into the slave trade. You understand the slave trade went east, went west, and there was an East African slave trade. Now, this all connects with the East African slave trade, the East African slave trade. And what we must um, make mention of, you understand, and then also provide the further evidences for is how slavery, you understand, in the east of Africa was led primarily by Mohammedanism, by an earlier form of Islamofascism or terrorism, similar to what we see going on even today. When we look at the pictures of Somalia today and we look at those, um, those drought victims, you understand, mainly women and children. If we look at them clear, clearly and carefully, we'll recognize that, wait, how come Al-Shabaab and others are trying to say, particularly, that there is no famine and it's not really affecting them? And many of them claim, many of the Islamists or the Mohammedans would claim more of a Arab identity. This, is, this all goes back to the 1500s. This all goes back to the 1500s, and in particular, in particular, certain events that happened in and about 1530 A.D. You understand? The first initial enslavement of black peoples, Ethiopian peoples, and in particular, the Gullah people, you understand, or the Gullah people, you understand, was led off by the Ottoman Turks and their Mohammedan allies, their Mohammedan allies. They ascribe the name to these Ormo and other peoples as the Gula, the Gala, those who said no. They refused to convert to the Ottoman Turkish form of Islamism, you understand, or Islamism, you understand. But some did convert. Some did convert. And these are the ones who are fighting the terroristic war today. You understand, this is, these are the ones we find most hostile to the African Zion and most hostile to we as Ethiopian Hebrews and Judeo-Christians and the whole idea of Moa on Bessazem, Negeta Yehuda, Ekedemawi, Haile Selassie, Siumek, Zabi, Nebus, Negeta, Etiopia. They are most hostile to the throne of 
David. You understand? So we need to understand how this people, you understand, first of all, have been called both the Gala, you understand, in the East, and the Gullah, you understand, in the West. And when we're speaking about the Gullah in the West, we're speaking about our people. We're speaking about my people. You know what I'm saying? So when people would say, well, you don't know what you're talking about. No, they're not anything related to the Gala, the RMO people. These people don't even know their own history. You understand? These people don't even know their own history. They're learning their history because they've come over to the West. They've come to a land of opportunity similar to, you know, Egypt, you know what I'm saying, in the time of the Exodus. But we need to know who we are. It's important to know our identity. So now this this Gala identity today, as we mentioned in the first part, you know what I'm saying, is a pejorative and is seen as being derogatory. In other words, the people don't, don't um, identify with this identity. They more identify with this name, the Ormo, the Ormo today. You know what I'm saying? So we need to note that. But similar-wise with the Gullah people, this Gullah is also referred to as a pejorative or derogatory, and there's derogatory usage of this name. But the people, the African Americans, have still held to this as an important identifier. You understand? The Gullah and the Geechee people are identifier, you understand, know with their African roots, and not just their West African roots. A lot of the historians and the um, scholars and others would like to say, well, it's mainly West Africa. It has nothing to do with East Africa as though there is some wall. There is no wall between East and West Africa. You need to get that out of your minds. You understand? And, and forget what these European educated Anglo American, these ones who have enslaved us, you understand? In other words, the, the descendants of the ones who enslaved us. They put all these barriers intellectually. There are intellectual walls where people would not accept or would like not to accept this and say that it has nothing to do with one another. You understand? So what you have to recognize is that you have to learn the truth for yourself. You have to learn the truth for yourself. If you're waiting for the next, the next student next to you to learn the lesson, then you'll say you learned the lesson. Well, you're a darn idiot. You understand? You're, you're ignorant. You know what I'm saying? We have to learn who we are and what's the connection. So what we have is an East and West connection, an East and West. And we have the roots of this. You know what I'm saying? The roots of Gala are not Amharic. The roots of Gala are not Ethiopic. The roots of Gala are Arabic. See, this is the key. The roots of Gala in its use in Ethiopia or misuse and abuse in Ethiopia are Arabic, but particularly is Ottoman Turkish. Just like Habisha today, just like Abyssinia today. And when they say, well, no, Habisha, that's Ethiopian, ask them, what about Habashistan? Who gave that name? And show us before the Ottoman Turks when you was calling yourself Habisha or Abyssinian. In fact, if you look up the word Habisha and Abyssinian, it goes back to Mohammedanism, it goes back to the Ottoman Turks, it goes back to the slave trade, it goes back to divide and conquer, it goes back to the Horn of Africa, you understand, when the foreigners came in to our lands, raped it, divided it, conquered certain parts of it, you understand, and enslaved a group of people who would be marched from the east. Some fled. Some were able to flee, you understand, in different directions, you understand, but a portion of these people were marched from the east, you understand, to the slave ports in the west where they would end up eventually, you understand, in America, you understand, in South Carolina, you understand, in the seacoast islands of Georgia and those regions and would retain this name, Gala, you understand, as Gola, as Gola. Those who said no to Mohammedanism, those who said no to being slaves. And, and this is very important about the Gullah people and about the Angolan roots, because if you look up, you'll find they have, they say there's a link with Angola. If you go back to... Um, the first uh, freedom-seeking um, Africans, 
who were enslaved in America, you will find that they will tell you in their history books that there was a group of slaves they believe were from Angola. You understand? And there's a whole Ethiopian connection with that. Because if you go back to the historical books, you'll see many places they identified the enslaved Africans either as Ethiopians, either as Negroes, you understand? And eventually, different names for some of them who stood out. Why did the Gullah people stood out? Because they were able to maintain their cultural African roots. They were able to fight and resist. You understand? And, by and large, you understand, they understood what it meant to be good Christians. Not because of white man's Christianity, but because of what they were called, you understand, in the East. You understand? In the East, where they were known as either Gala or Ramo or Amhara peoples. As Amhara, Gala, or Ramo, before they were enslaved. So this is very, very important for us to understand. And we just thought we would go over this Gala and Gullah connection. This is a Gala and this Gullah connection between the Gala of the East. And remember, we, we, we want to point this out again. Yes, we know it's a pejorative term. But in some ways, so was Gullah a pejorative term. But the people who identify, who recognize what their story is, they recognize that no matter if the outsiders use this terminology pejoratively or as a, a derogatory word, similar to how the N-word, it's preferable to, to identify themselves as gullahs, you know what I'm saying, than as niggers and negroes. Because in the word gullah, you know what I'm saying, is more of our roots and links to the motherland, and as we trace ourselves to our very roots in the highlands of Ethiopia and to biblical prophecy and to, to the throne of David and to the true black Hebrew Israelites or Ethiopian Hebrews. You understand? So this is a very, very important lesson right here. This is a very important connection between the Gala and the Gala, the Ethiopian connection. It is very, very significant. There's, there's a whole world of history. This is one of the areas. This, this Keeley right here is one of the areas of history that has not been taught sufficiently. In fact, in some ways, it has not been addressed more than just a passing word here or there. You understand? And the Eurocentric and the Anglo-American and the racist scholarship, you understand, they understand why they do not go into this very deeply. You understand? Because to go into this too deeply for white supremacy is to open a Pandora's box. And not just for white supremacy, but for what we know today as the Islamicism and as Mohammedanism, you understand, and that Horn of Africa and Middle East region. This is one of the reasons why there's no peace in the Middle East. You understand? Because of these events that took place nearly, nearly 500 to 1,000 years ago. You understand? Between the times of the First Crusades, between the times of the, the Ahmed Grain, you understand, and other Mohammedan and, and, and pagan and heathen assaults against that Judeo-Christian polity known as Holy Ethiopia, known as Biblical Ethiopia, known as Solomonic Dynasty. The Solomonic Dynasty was attacked, you understand? And by and large, it was attacked by Islamofascism known as Mohammedanism. And see, we make a distinction between what ones will say true Islam is. Because only true Islam, from an Ethiopian perspective we know of, is when Mohammed sent his Sahaba during the time of the Hijrah. You understand? After the death of the Prophet Mohammed, this whole view and picture of Islam and Mohammedanism changed. Because Mohammed said, leave Ethiopia alone. The Ottoman Turks, you understand, and others, and their running dogs, and their black allies who consider themselves more Arab 
than African. So that's another key link that you will find they are blacks and Africans. You will see them as Africans. You will see them as black, but they will see themselves as Arab and Mohammedanists. You understand? So here we have a divide and a break in the Abrahamic family between Isaac, you understand, and Jacob, and the Beta Israel, and Ishmael, and Esau, just as the Bible prophesizes it. You understand? Just as the Bible shows the ancient history of it, and just as we're able to trace it from then to even today, what's happening in the Horn of Africa. It's not new. It's not new at all. It's only new to those who didn't know and don't know the Gala and the Gullah connection, that don't understand the Ottoman Turkish, Ahmed Gran, Mohammedanism, the Gal, Gulla, the Oromo connection. You understand? So we, as African Americans, are also Oromo peoples. We as African Americans are not just, yeah, as one would say, we're not just, um, as you would say, Amharas in that sense, or Amhara kin, you understand? But we have a Ormo connection. So now we need to understand more about the Ormo people, because the Ormo people, like many peoples, are not a monolith to say that they're not all one thing. Some are Christians, you understand? Some became Amharas. You understand? Therefore, they became part of the Judeo-Christian polity of Ethiopia. Some remain in their tribalistic indigenous belief system. You understand? Some were enslaved beyond their borders and ended up in the West. And these are the Gullah. These are my people. These are your people. And this is half of the story you need to know. <laughs>